What's going on guys, Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I am bringing you another dueling book game worth myself at 816 rating and my opponent at 713 rating, so a decently high rated game. Uh, I am on Burning Abyss this game and my opponent's on Dragon Link as you can see by the video title. Uh, I do want to say I think this game is an absolute banger, there's some really cool things that happen and I think it really shows what these decks can do and I think it was actually a great game for what it was. Uh, and yeah, I'm just here to provide my commentary, my play-by-play, -play, and sort of my thought process as it went along, some in-depth Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel commentary. So if that is something you enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me and what I do here on the channel, so it would be greatly appreciated. Also, before we hop in, I do want to let you guys know, Discord link down below, uh, along with all of our other social media links, where you can follow the channel more closely, maybe hang out with friends and talk to other Yu-Gi-Oh! players, maybe play Mas Master Duel. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's hop into this game here. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, go ahead and win the rock, paper, scissors. No, we lose the rock, paper, scissors. We do lose the rock, paper, scissors. So, uh, this is burning abyss and it is the trap variant. So I'm on 40 cards. My opponent's on 40 cards. I'm going to open up with fairy tale, snow, graph, dinomiscus, solemn warning, and skarm. This might be an interesting card for you guys to see. I'll sort of explain it as the duel goes on why I'm on this in this current version. Uh, but our opponent opens Safer, DD Crow, this card's crazy versus Burning Abyss, uh, Rocket Synchron, Ash Blossom, and Collapse Serpent. So his hand, Safer, Collapse, pretty good, two hand traps. His hand's pretty crazy. So uh, going on into it, he's going to start off with Safer. Uh, I guess while our opponent is doing Dragon Link stuff, uh, I'll sort of talk about Solemn Warning a little bit. Uh, it seems really decent this format compared to Strike in a lot of weird situations. Uh, they go for the Striker Dragon with Collapse Serpent. Um, because Strike is really bad, like going into Despia sometimes, because if they brand it in red, uh, they just like chain block their Chimera, right? But Solemn Warning can just negate branded in red in general, it can negate branded fusion. Um, it just has some like really interesting stuff versus the branded deck and I think that makes it really good because I think this deck's one of its worst matchups is actually branded so um, yeah I think warning has some reason to be played there and I'm just sort of testing it out right now our opponent goes for the Papega ruler everyone's favorite milling chaos space Seyfert, gamma and uh, odd eyes revolution dragon and our opponent only mills four cards all right so our opponent mills four there it's very high level um, strategy with that you know keeping one more card in deck uh, yeah just forgetting to mill the fifth card <laughs> he's gonna add odd eyes revolution dragon and pitch it for of course the chaos emperor this card is crazy and of course we have no hand trap so our opponent is just free to do whatever they want they're gonna chaos space add back collax surf the deck and draw destrudo that's a pretty good card uh, he's gonna activate his pendulum monster use its effect add back safer to hand uh, and then he's going to banish light and dark special summon it back and of course he's going for the zombie vampire play here with two level eights and you know i'm playing burning abyss so at this point i'm pretty happy he's made this card i could mill like farfa uh, and banish this which i guess wouldn't do much right now but in like other game states maybe it's okay or hold up we could banish seals more importantly that's what you really do is you banish seals then it comes back to a main monster zone so that is exactly what we would be doing if we mill a Farfa, you could mill a Seer, Graf, Skarm, so many good things to mill here. So him making that makes me a little happy. Um, he's going to use the effect milling three spells and a Veiler, so nothing too crazy. I'm going to mill Torrential, Barbar, Bar, Droplet, and Called by the Grave. Terrible mill. <laughs> That's not the mill I wanted to see, but it is what we got. Uh, so he's going to special summon the Veiler, use Seyfert's effect, bring back Chaos Emperor because it was engraved because it was detached as material, and he's going to pass. So ending his turn with Ash, Crow, uh, and Seals, not not terrible. It's definitely enough to stop most Burning Abyss turns. Of course, going second, all BA really wants to do is try to stick a Zeus. So I'm going to start my turn and activate Alec, special summoning it from the hand. Uh, of course, in attack position because we're going to try to bait the Seals. Uh, we're going to special summon the Skarm. I think Graph is going to be the Burning Abyss I want to normal summon this turn. Um, and there was, like, another way to potentially do this. I think, it, maybe not in this game state, but there's some times where you want to let your Dante actually get bounced and then, like, extend with the Graph. Say you normal summon this and Don, or Dante gets bounced with this under it. Then you're going to special summon and you can still use the other BA uh, to special summon and still make your play while getting the bounce out. And you can still make Zeus. However, that wasn't a line I was really going for in this hand. Um, either I just didn't see it at the time or I was like too worried about like getting interrupted at the wrong spot you know like maybe him saying okay Dante's good and then waiting till I go into battle phase uh, either way 
I, I knew I could swing into his zombie vampire with a regular BA and still make Zeus if that so happened to be like the best play in my eyes. He's going to seal, bounce back his Valor, which is, you know, really good for him. Valor's not crazy versus this deck uh, this turn, but if I follow up for Tour Guide, it's really good. Uh, he's going to special Brotar, uh, pitching Destrudo, which is insane. Uh, getting the Levy in here. And, you know, I'm deciding if I want to swing at the Zombie Vampire, which means if I want to make uh, Zeus later, I can because an Xyz monster has battled. I'm going to normal summon the Graph. Uh, going to go ahead and make the Dante, very standard Burning Abyss. Uh, detach the Graph for Dante. And we're going to mill Libic, which is not good for us here. So our Grave is, you know, getting filled up for Snow, mostly. Graph Effect, going to go ahead and special summon the Seer, and we're just going for the main Burning Abyss, like, turn one play, even though we went second, I decide not to go for Zeus. Maybe, uh, like, uh, a four material Zeus was the best play here, uh, especially since we got DD Crow on our Dante, like, the fact that our opponent's maining DD Crow, it's really good right now for Branded, so it makes sense, but this card just destroys Dante Seer, and it's really, really frustrating to see that game. One, I was like, oh, okay, so it's going to be one of these types of games. I'm going to go ahead and set Solemn Warning and set Dinomiscus, which is fair enough. Our opponent's going to activate the Zombie Vampire. Again, I'm pretty happy about this because I'm playing Burning Abyss. Maybe this time we mill better. I'm going to mill Farfa and two traps and a Prosperity. So he's going to special Noctovision off the Zombie Vampire, and I am just going to banish it with the Farfa. He's going to add Tracer off Abs, and as you can see, our opponent has like eight cards in hand, and we have... A few interruptions. We have more interruptions than it looks like, which is one of the things I like about Burning Abyss a lot, is you can get very far with just a few cards. He's going to special Levy in here. We're going to warning that instantly. That card's not allowed to blow up our back row right now. Uh, he's going to activate the Chaos Space. Uh, going to put back the Striker Dragon and draw a Driver. So not the greatest draw, not an Extender, which is what he wanted. But he does have this Pendulum card, which is just super, super good here. Um, so yeah, he's gonna go ahead and activate, pay his thousand. I'm gonna Dinomiscus chain because I want Snow and Grave once, or, or first of all, and then second of all, I don't want this thing doing the billion things it can actually do, right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send Snow, and here, here I think I misplayed a little bit, and then after I misplay a little bit, I make an egregious misplay. I let this go through for some reason in my head in that moment. I was like, oh, I'll just Snow the Savage, but. I, I sort of haven't played Snow in so long. In fact, I don't think I've run Snow in a deck ever. Um, that I just forgot she was like actually an on summon effect. So I'm going to go ahead and banish 7 for Snow. And essentially bait the Savage Negate, but not stop his existence entirely. So we're going to Snow. Target the Savage. Savage is going to Negate. Uh, and then he's going to attempt to go Battle Phase. I'm going to IP for Unicorn. Which is one of the reasons I think BA just have more interrupts than it looks like. Like, I could activate Snow again, and I have this Unicorn. It didn't look like I had a lot of interrupts, but I really do. I'm going to pitch Seer and send the Savage back. And then I say Seer effect, okay. Seer is going to target Skarm, uh, and that's fine. And I, I thought I made a misplay, but I didn't make a misplay. I thought I forgot to bring back Dante, but no, Dante's just banished. That That's what happened uh, in that instance. So, he can special Chaos Ruler. Uh, and then he's going to swing over and I decide not to snow and save myself 3000 because again He's not killing me with that attack. So that's pretty fine. I'm, I'm like, okay Maybe if we are fortunate we can get through this But he reveals that ash blossom in hand. He's still got effect Valor in hand just in case we top something good We're gonna top deck a cow cab and that's just gonna be it. So going on in game two. I'm siding for go first um, Definitely in our trap variant of burning abyss that makes some sense uh, we're gonna open up our hands here in game two with Solemn Warning, Ice Dragon's Prison, Anti-Spell, Alec, and Graph. This hand is bonkers. I mean, this alone is amazing. Uh, except for, besides evenly matched, this hand is almost just guaranteed game. Uh, this is actually so good. And our opponent opens Raigeki, Boot Sector, Chaos Space, and Octovision, Raigeki. And as we see here, uh, our friend opened four spells and we have anti-spell so this is gonna be a great fun interactive game where a lot of things happen uh, some really high skill level play right now going for the uh, Dante uh, essentially nothing we do here matters although that was the most insane mill off Dante I think I've ever had snow and Skarm that's pretty good <laughs> so like we were already winning this game because of this one card uh, so which I guess is a spoiler alert but we're just gonna get through this game pretty fast because I think Everyone knows how this is going to go off. Uh, we're going to IP with the uh, Seer and the Dante, and we're going to Seer Dante. Um, 
Special back, Dante, add back Seer, pitch the Seer, make Beatrice. This is, you know, the standard Burning Abyss plan. It's really good. I mean, it's one interrupt off Beatrice, either through Farfa or Snow if you don't already have it, or Backjack. It's another through Unicorn, and pitching card is pretty good. I really like this first turn for BA. It also sets up decent follow-up, and we're going to set uh, the Anti-Spell, the Ice Dragon, and the Warning. I'm going to go End Phase, no Nibiru. Uh, Skarm, add Tour Guide, which is pretty good follow-up. You know, like more than often she's just going to get hand trapped but it's, it's still a really strong card to just have follow up uh we're going to anti-spell and he's going to show us our hand i see that and that is going to wrap up that game uh anti-spell very powerful card apparently uh and we're siding for ghost second so we side in things like dark ruler we side our droplets back in we sided some dd crows in uh because our side deck is built a lot for despia so crow is of course in there along with ash blossom uh, we sided in some good Ghost Second stuff, and we're going to open our hand, and we're going to see Barbar, Bar, Seer, Graph, the one of Backjack, and the Tarantula Tribute. So, seeing no Ghost Second cards, obviously pretty good. Our opponent's going to open Quick Launch, Safer, Driver, Big Old Pendulum Guy, and DD Crow. Again, this card is amazing versus us, but we see he has a starter in Safer, and he has Quick Launch as an extender, and of course he has the best card in the deck, so... We are definitely looking to be in some trouble here. He's going to start with Safer. I don't have a hand trap. So, you know, this is normally without Gamma, a pretty weak opening for Dragon Link. If this was Gamma, then this is like one of the best openings because you just, Ash just loses you the game. Um, but yeah, now he's going to Special Black and Special Striker. Um, and then Striker Effect going to add... Uh, we're just going to go through some normal Dragon Link stuff. I know we have all seen this combo about 6,000 times. Or, you know, no combo is so set in stone to be the same in Dragon Link. Like, you, your draws change it, but we know where this is going, essentially. He's comboing, and he's going to get there. I mean, he already opened uh, the Quick Launch and this, so he has enough extenders to even play through one or two hand traps. Going to go for the Ravine, dump the Abs Router, get access to Rocket Tracer. Uh, going to go ahead and activate the Boot, boot Effect, uh, Summon Tracer. Make seals, quick launch for the rocket tracer again, and then tracer effect, uh, send the boot. So one thing I've noticed this Dragon Link player does, this Dragon Link player actually gets rid of his boot a lot. Uh, when I go to like regionals and stuff, and I play against Dragon Link players, that's something a lot of them don't do. Maybe you could argue this hand required it. Um, like, you could argue that, but usually keeping boot is really good in my opinion. Uh, just because boot follow-up is amazing. But maybe he's decided, since I'm probably going to try to Zeus him anyways, it just doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, luckily for me, he's gotten rid of boot twice. So if I can't break his board, at least I don't have to deal with that form of follow-up. He's going to Savage, not going for the Papega Ruler here, just accepting he has two interrupts plus a Crow, which again is very good for Burning Abyss. Uh, he's going to activate his guy. Add back, I believe, the Collapser. No, the Safer, right? He adds back the Safer, yeah. Uh, and then he's going to special him. I don't know if there's a reason to special summon this card this turn. I guess there's no reason not to. But it's just like sitting there. Maybe you could save it for next turn. Um, but yeah, he chooses a special summon. I draw Karma Cut. I absolutely love this card. Uh, honestly, one of the reasons I built this deck is I have some Secret First Tour Guides I never get to use. And I just recently picked up three Ulti First Karma Cut. So I was like, what deck plays both? Burning Abyss. So I built it in real life, built it on here to test. And that's sort of why we're, we are where we're at. I'm going to special summon Barbar, -bar. uh, and then I'm going to, I believe, special Graph. And this, you always want to make Seer, like, make sure it goes off, in my opinion. Uh, so Graph, as good as he is, I already have Seer, so I can special the Graph here. And I'm going Battle Phase. Again, I mentioned it before, but I do think, potentially, like, especially in this hand, right? Like, say I normal summon the Graph, uh, and he doesn't do anything. Well, because he has Savage, that's going to delete what I said. But pretend he just has Seals, right? I make the uh, Dante, um, Dante gets bounced, and then Graf special summons again, uh, I don't know, I I'm just thinking through that line of thought, and I don't know if it actually is the best thing to do, maybe what I'm doing is already the right thing, but I'm just thinking there's a way to still do what you want to do here, but again, them bouncing in battle phase just sort of cancels that, so, no, nah, I'm going to assume this is the right play, well, that's what we're saying, okay, that's, that's how we're doing it, so he's going to bounce the Graf. I, I think I actually just ran in circles for no reason, because <laughs> I, I think we already did the best play, and I'm overthinking what we should be doing. Um, he's going to add the Levianir, which is an amazing card. We're going to swing at the Brotard, normal summon the Seer, and then we are able to put that in the extra monster zone, effect, detach, Barbar, hopefully mill like Snow or Skarm. We mill Graf, who's already activated, so that's complete garbage. 
Um, then we're going to link into the gravity controller and then we're going to go for the seer target Dante Dante target seer and we get DD crow again so we are actually just not playing burning abyss game one or three because of DD crow and you know this card coming into the format has made burning abyss already weaker than it is like it's already like just a fun rogue strategy in my opinion but DD crow is a menace because now we end on gravity controller set two <clears throat> and luckily for us uh, we have two really good trap cards because what he's going to do, which I think it, it makes a lot of sense, is he's just going to start with Levian here because he wants to blow past the back row and then play. Uh, on summon, I'm going to Karma Cut the Savage Dragon, which, you know, if he... He has a couple of options here, right? Like, if you just let this go through, then you lose your Savage and you play into hand traps. But, like, essentially my win condition is that he gets greedy and wants to keep his savage right because i'm doing karma cut on summon targeting savage because my back row would be blown up if he's not greedy he gets to leave these on board make the zombie vampire because he hasn't gone through that yet and just keep going right but he gets greedy and uses savage dragon here which is exactly what i wanted because i can chain torrential and wipe the board which keeps us in the game despite him opening dd crow and going first like i'm pretty happy it worked out this way because you know we sided for go second drew no go second cards and our opponent just sort of played into the back row, <clears throat> which is nice for us. And we did pitch back jack for Karma Cut, so it's going to activate. And uh, I'm going to organize my deck. I'm going to leave that top card as a surprise for y'all because back jack is so crazy. <laughs> I love back jack. Um, so he is going to use his Brotar effect. He just put that Pendulum uh, monster back to his deck, so that's an easy search for him if that's what he chooses, and he does. So he's going to activate it. This card is so insane. Like, honestly, this card is ridiculous. Um, but again, a couple of misplays on my opponent's part, like summoning this the turn previous and then, you know, playing into Torrential the way he did. It's like, I feel like this was definitely a super easy game for him, but now we're definitely in more of a grind where he's going to try to kill me as fast as he can. Uh, he's going to summon Dark. Dark is going to target the only thing he really can, which is Gravity Controller. Uh, he's going to link those off into Triple Burster, which, you know, it works. It's two monsters except tokens. Or Triple Burst. I don't know why I said Burster, like Wiver Burster. He's going to Banish Light and Dark to Special Summon the Pendulum. He's going to Safer Effect to bring back the Levianir. Um, and then he's going to Special Summon the Levianir. And he's going to proceed into the battle phase. And I'm going to activate my back jack. And it's going to reveal Ice Dragon's Prison. And that's able to be activated this turn. So that is a crazy interrupt off of back jack. Such a good card. We're going to take the 24. We're going to take the 3000. Uh, and then when he swings with Levianir, we are going to Ice Dragons. Take his Seyfert. Uh, and of course, banish these two. Now, one thing I want to mention is I'm not quite sure if where I Ice Dragons was best. There's just like, if I use it earlier, right, when he had, he had two Seyfert's Engrave. He banished this one for, I believe, the Pendulum Monster. We had two Seyfert's and a Levian here. So, if I Ice Dragon when he has these two, and wait for him to, like, Seyfert Effect to add back the Levy, and then I can, like, banish, banish. Well, well, no, I can't special this, but the, the reason I didn't do that is I can't, like, grab Seyfert and banish something and then still stop this monster. And then if I do this any earlier, he could make access code here, right? I'm pretty sure this doesn't lock you into dragons or anything. That's, it's not one of those. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is where I had the Ice Dragons. We're going to banish, we're going to survive, and then we are going to have no Skarm Effect. Uh, but we draw a third BA, which is pretty good, because now we have two BAs staring down his board. I'm um, going to special the Cow Cab. I'm going to normal summon the Graph. Make the Dante. Dante effect, detach Graph, mill three. We do mill the Skarm, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to special Farfa with the Graph. Special summon the Seer, overlay into Break Sword. Uh, and the reason is I've already detached off this and I want four material Zeus and I preferably want four material Zeus with a Farfa under it just in case it could be negated. I still have an interrupt. Um, so we're going to swing. We're going to overlay downward and we're going to overlay Zeus. Uh, end phase, we are going to Zeus effect and Skarm effect. Uh, detaching the materials, sending everything. Dante effect, add back graph. So our follow up has gotten pretty ridiculous and under this Zeus, right, is a Seer and a Farfa. So even if this got impermed, we could still bring back Dante and get a Banish, right? Uh, of course, our opponent doesn't have enough cards to like capitalize off an imperm anyways, but that's one of the reasons I love Zeus and Burning Abyss so much is the fact that if Farfa is a material, even if this is negated by Dark Ruler or Droplet or 
um, imperm, right? It's still an interrupt because of Farfa. And then whatever else you have is just like free. And I think that is one of the best things about Burning Abyss as like a Zeus deck. But yep, he's going to draw Gamma. He's going to normal summon it and he is going to concede. And that is going to wrap up our game. Um, some of the highlights and why I said it was a good game is I think that game one really showed Burning Abyss having like actually a lot more interrupts than it really does. I think it showed that the deck actually puts up four or five interrupts easily and that was going second right that's pretty good uh, and then going first game two was a fake game so we don't count that game three again going second without drawing a go second card we were still able to push past dragon link now because our hand wasn't very powerful we did need a few misplays from our opponent um but yeah i mean like if we opened good as the same token we could have just like dark ruler made zeus and still won so yeah i mean i think burning abyss has some potential to it and i really enjoy the deck but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did leave a like subscribe this has been aaron from top tier gaming bye youtube